Can a new superhero survive on her own away from her team? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read a dramatic back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. This is the first miniseries for Faith. Now I'm aware that some people are not fans of the character Faith or the message behind this character, but as I've stated in many other videos, you need to look past the character sometimes to the story. And this is a good story, and I enjoyed this story. So if you don't enjoy this story or you don't enjoy Faith, don't worry. We put out plenty of other videos for you. It's another sunny morning in Los Angeles where our hero Faith is awoken by the sounds of her neighbors. As she gets up, she hears the neighbors talking about the random crimes that they have committed, and being the superhero that she is, she decides to check it out. Except, she can't let anyone know that she's actually the superhero Zephyr, so she has to disguise herself as Summer Smith. After finding out the neighbors were just rehearsing for their improv group and feeling rather embarrassed because she was going to try and stop a whole crime, Faith figures that it's time to get ready for work and she heads off. As she flies over the busy streets, she thinks how this wasn't going to be a long-term living situation, living on her own without her superhero team and that breakup with her boyfriend. She just wanted to live the dream, be a hard-hitting journalist with an awesome secret identity. With the support of people and once in a while, she'll save the random attractive man. Faith did get a job in media, just not in the area that she expected as she writes blog posts for websites. And as the day goes on, Faith sits with her other co-workers during the break and sees that her old boyfriend and former superhero team member, Torque, just got himself a reality show. Faith begins to think back to how she could have gone the same route as Torque. She just didn't want to. She just wants to help and not really be the center of attention like he does. And as her workday ends, she heads back to her apartment and she talks to her friend Archer over the computer about the last episode of a new show called The Night Shifters. As the two of them talk, Faith begins to hear a police scanner on her phone go off and she has to cut things short. She quickly changes and she flies out and as she gets closer to the crime, she wonders what it could be. It's been a while since she last saw action. Maybe it's some burglars, maybe it's a supervillain group, maybe it's robots. Or maybe it's just that attractive actor, Chris. As Faith gets closer to the warehouse, she sees that it's none of those things. Instead, it's puppy nappers. She rushes in to stop them, but soon they all pull their guns out on her, and she's not exactly bulletproof. They all begin to fire at her, and she creates a companion field shielding her and the puppies, and then she launches them out the window. And then later that night, she heads back home and tells her hacker contract, known as the at symbol X, probably meaning Axe, that she decided to stop some puppy nappers. Does he like have any actual interesting work? Axe does mention that ever since their last battle with Harada, he's been trying to hide the names of some potential Saiyats that Harada was tracking. But it seems that a few of them have gone missing. One of the last names was a kid by the name of Sam Bradshaw, age 16. And Axe says that he doesn't have anything other than the last ping on the kid's cell phone. That might be worth checking out. Faith tells him, obvious, and she heads out into the night. She travels to the address where the boy's phone was last seen, and as she arrives, she sees some things that look kind of plain. And inside the house, it's a little bear. There's nothing but a chair and a fireplace, and when she looks at the fireplace, she sees that some of the ashes from the phone that Axe was locating. She begins to pick up the phone as she hears a voice behind her telling her, who's there? And when she turns, she sees a man, and she says that she could ask him the same thing. The man tells her that there was an alarm triggered when she entered, and then the man holds out a button and tells her that this place has been compromised, and it needs to be destroyed. The man finishes by stating that it has been his honor to serve the cause, and then Faith tries to stop him, but he pushes the button, and suddenly the whole house explodes! Faith manages to escape the explosion, but the damage has been done, and soon the houses next to the one that exploded begin to catch fire. After rescuing a child from one of the buildings, Faith begins to feel as though this was all her fault. If she wasn't poking around alone, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Maybe she does need her team. Once Faith goes back home, she gets a call from Axe telling her that he's sorry. Having her go out like that was dangerous. But Faith tells him it's not his fault. He isn't the one that pushed the button. And Axe tells her that he'll be trying to do some more digging for her. And that's when she mentions the man who said something about a cause before he detonated the explosion, killing himself. Hopefully that'll help with the hunt. And now she's going to get some sleep because that was a crazy night. The next day at work, Faith is told that she needs to write some posts about her ex-boyfriend Torque in his new TV show. You see, the media job that she got that she isn't too happy about is kind of a BuzzFeed article kind of a thing where she just comes up with lists and talks about pop culture. Not exactly the hard-hitting journalist that she wanted to be. So... She begins to watch the show, and she knows that she's supposed to be finding out all of the bad things about Torque, but she feels that with his power and potential, maybe he could help. He just needs a chance. So she flies over to his home and begins to think about how maybe things will turn out. Maybe things won't be awkward since they're exits. Maybe they can go fight a giant robot. But as she arrives, she kind of sees Torque with his new girlfriend, Sydney. 
Sydney turns and asks, who the hell is that? And Faith asks if she can speak to Torque alone for a moment. As the two of them walk off, Faith explains the situation that someone is hunting down potential Psyots and wanted to see if he could help her. And he tells her no. He already saved the world once and now he's enjoying his rewards. So why give that up? Faith says that she thought that maybe he could be better than all of that, because people are dying trying to stop organizations that are hunting Scions, and maybe he's forgotten about their friend, Charlene. Tork tells her that she should probably just leave, and Faith heads off. As she returns home, she figures out that she's going to have to do this on her own, and she sends an email to Sam's mother to see if maybe she can help her find out more about where he went. When she goes to meet Mrs. Bradshaw about it, she tells Faith that she has no clue where Sam may have disappeared to, only something about a night shifters thing. With this, Faith tries to leave and see what she can find out about any night shifter events that are going on. And when she leaves and flies off, we discover that there's someone watching her. The figure watches Faith and reports back to the director to inform him that someone's been poking around. And not only that, she's a scion. The director tells the men that they should go ahead and bring her in. And later at work, Faith begins to talk to her boss about the recent article that was posted about Torque when they suddenly hear gunfire from outside the office. When Faith opens up the door, she sees three men with guns asking her where the flying girl Zephyr is. While the men continue to question Faith's co-workers, she changes into her uniform and throws a filing cabinet at one of them. The two of them turn around and they open fire, but Faith creates another companion field to shield everyone, and then she flies outside, dragging the two men with her. She tells them that she doesn't like the idea of killing someone, but she can't hold on to them for long. And the men tell her that she won't learn anything from them. And that's when they both explode. Faith rushes back in to check on the third man and finds that he also exploded. And while she looks over the burn marks left by the man, her boss tells her that everyone will keep her identity secret, so long as they can at least have an interview as to why Zephyr is here. Elsewhere, reports come in to the director telling him that the three men they sent are dead. And the director says that they're going to run out of their extras at this rate. But now, it's just going to be three more lives that humanity owes them. So now, they're just going to move forward and proceed with the next experiment, and hopefully this subject survives! Outside the office, the boy Sam is being dragged off by two hooded figures until he is set down and strapped into a chair and injected with something. Behind him, one hooded figure tells everyone soon, humanity will feel their wrath, for they once blossomed, but now they will wither and die, and the rest of the figures begin to chant, wither and die, wither and die, wither and die. The next day, Faith goes to an interview that she has to conduct, one with Hadley Scott, a woman on the show Night Shifters, which is kind of convenient because she's looking for someone connected to a Night Shifters event. Anyway, when she meets her, she introduces herself as Summer Smith, her secret identity. But Hadley tells her that she actually asked for her because she needs Faith's help. She knows who she really is. Faith asks if she knows who's been kidnapping all of these potential scions, and Hadley tells her that she's actually a part of them. And it wasn't like this before. They lived as a part of humanity. Things were fine until the director started to change things. Hadley Hadley goes on to explain that the director started to convince everyone in their group that their people need a revenge, so he wanted to use the Sayas to strike back at humanity for the lives that they've lost. And Faith asks, who exactly are they trying to get revenge on? And Hadley tells her, everyone, all of humanity. And Faith asks if she's really like the time-traveling cyborg that she plays in the show. Hadley tells her, of course not, don't be silly. She's an alien, all of them are aliens. Back over at Torque's home though, him and Sydney are sitting by the pool when Torque complains about the recent article about him from Faith's work. Sydney tells him that he should stop complaining. He wanted to be a celebrity. In fact, maybe all those negative comments are true. Maybe he's just a spoiled child. Torque tries to defend himself, but soon he begins to feel rather sleepy. And as he falls asleep, Sydney goes to the hooded figure and tells them that she wanted to bring Torque in before he got suspicious of things. And that's when the man pulls down his hood, revealing himself to be the director. And he tells her that for a long time they've lived among the humans, but now it's time for humanity to pay for all that they've taken from them. Back at Faith's apartment, Faith calls in Archer to help with the extraction of the prisoners that Hadley told them about. And soon the three of them, Archer, Faith, and Hadley, all set off to the manor where the alien group known as the Hive have been keeping everyone. The three sneak into the building and they begin to make their way down to the lower levels and break into the room that Hadley told them the prisoners are at. As Faith picks the lock and they open up the door, they see nothing. Before any of them can react, an explosion goes off, knocking everyone to the ground, and they soon find themselves surrounded by the director and all of his test subjects, including Torque. The director looks down at Hadley and asks if she really thought she could bring humans here and them not know about it. Oh well. It's time for them all to die. As he pushes the button, all of the test subjects begin to move in and Torque begins to attack Faith. The others begin to close in around Hadley and Archer, but during the struggle, Hadley grabs one of the subjects by the helmet and rips it off, breaking the director's control on them. Archer looks back and Hadley tells him that she does her own stunts. Torque lunges at Faith and grabs a hold of her by the neck and Faith begins to fly up, taking Torque with her. Faith tries to struggle to break free, but slowly she starts losing what air she has left. She continues to try and fight Torque off, but she knows that she only has one shot at this and she begins to reach her arm out. And with a jerk, 
jerk backwards, she rips off the invisible helmet that Torque is wearing. Back on the ground, Hadley and Archer begin to take off the last of the test subject's helmets, and the director tells them that it seems that they need to run more experiments. But before he can continue, Faith calls out to him, telling him that his experiments are over. The director and Sydney then tell Faith that they will seek justice, and Faith tells them that they won't hurt any more innocent people. Everyone here is a part of the planet, and they are not alone. The director orders everyone to kill them, and everyone begins to fight the cult members while the director and Sydney attempt to escape. Faith flies in, managing to grab a hold of the director, but Sydney manages to get away. But then, once Torque and the rest of the prisoner Syath begin finishing up all of the rest of the cult members, Faith returns with the director, and they hand him over to Gate. Slowly, things start to go back to normal. Even Torque liked one of Faith's Facebook posts. That's kind of a start. And as Faith goes back to work, she begins to think about how she managed to save LA, but still, there's no new superhero team, no fancy metal. Everything's just back to normal. And maybe that's okay. As she returns to her desk, she bumps into her coworker Jay, and Jay asks if she would like to hang out with him and his girlfriend sometime. They're putting together an RPG group, and they wanted to know if she'd be interested. Faith begins to think about how maybe just little changes are the best one, and she tells him to count her in. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I personally really enjoy the character of Faith. She's a geek, just like a lot of my friends and myself, and she's into all kinds of cool stuff, and she's a superhero. How can you go wrong with that? And for those of you who are wondering, oh, how did this story do well? Or if you didn't like the character, well, the first issue went into, like, its eighth print. And this miniseries did so well that Faith now has a series that is coming out. So I'm going to link where that series is located down below so you can continue the adventures of Faith as she enjoys her stay in L.A. I'm Benny the Comic Story, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Comic Story and Instagram at Comic Story, and I'll see you next time right here.